The roots of the reconstructed Proto-Indo-European language pi are basic parts of words that carry a lexical meaning, so-called morphemes. Pi roots usually have verbal meaning like eat or run. Roots never occur alone in the language. Complete inflected words like verbs, nouns or adjectives are formed by adding further morphemes to a root. Topic. Word formation Typically, a root plus a suffix forms a stem, and adding an ending forms a word. R O O T plus S U F F I X S T E M plus E N D I N G W O R D Display style underbrace underbrace mathem root plus suffix underscore mathem stem plus mathem ending underscore mathem word. For example, asterisk bereti he bears can be split into the root asterisk beer to bear, the suffix asterisk e imperfective aspect, and the ending asterisk t present tense third person singular. The suffix is sometimes missing, which has been interpreted as a zero suffix. Words with zero suffix are termed root verbs and root nouns. Beyond this basic structure, there is the nasal infix, a present tense marker, and reduplication, a sort of prefix with a number of grammatical and derivational functions. Topic. Finite verbs Verbal suffixes, including the zero suffix, convey grammatical information about tense and aspect, two grammatical categories that are not clearly distinguished. Present and aorist are universally recognized, while some of the other aspects remain controversial. Two of the four moods, the subjunctive and the optative, are also formed with suffixes, which sometimes results in forms with two consecutive suffixes, asterisk bereet greater than asterisk bereet he would bear, with the first asterisk e being the present tense marker, and the second the subjunctive marker. Reduplication can mark the present and the perfect. Verbal endings convey information about grammatical person, number and voice. The imperative mood has its own set of endings. Topic. Nouns and adjectives Nouns usually derive from roots or verb stems by suffixation or by other means see the morphology of the Proto-Indo-European noun for some examples. This can hold even for roots that are often translated as nouns, asterisk ped, for example, can mean to tread or foot, depending on the oblaut grade and ending. Some nouns like asterisk ag no lamb or asterisk h ster star, however, do not derive from verbal roots. In any case, the meaning of a noun is given by its stem, whether this is composed of a root plus a suffix or not. This leaves the ending, which conveys case and number. Adjectives are also derived by suffixation of usually verbal roots. An example is asterisk gn h to s begotten produced from the root asterisk gen to beget to produce. The endings are the same as with nouns. Topic: Infinitives and participles. Infinitives are verbal nouns and, just like other nouns, are formed with suffixes. It is not clear whether any of the infinitive suffixes reconstructed from the daughter languages asterisk de, asterisk to, asterisk t, among others was actually used to express an infinitive in pi. Participles are verbal adjectives formed with the suffixes asterisk ent active imperfective and aorist participle, asterisk woes perfect participle and asterisk mh no or asterisk m e no mediopassive participle, among others. Topic. Shape of a root In its base form, a pi root consists of a single vowel, preceded and followed by consonants. Except for a very few cases, the root is fully characterized by its consonants, while the vowel may alternate in accordance with inflection or word derivation. Thus, the root asterisk b er can also appear as asterisk b or, with a long vowel as asterisk b er or asterisk b or, or even unsyllabic as asterisk br, in different grammatical contexts. This process is called oblaut. In linguistic works, asterisk e is used to stand in for the various oblaut grades that the vowel may appear in. 
Some reconstructions also include roots with asteriska as the vowel, but the existence of asteriska as a distinct vowel is disputed. See Indo-European oblaut, a grade. The vowel is flanked on both sides by one or more consonants. The preceding consonants are the onset, the following ones are the coda. The onset and coda must contain at least one consonant, a root may not begin or end with the oblaut vowel. Consequently, the simplest roots have an onset and coda consisting of one consonant each. Such simple roots are common. Examples are asterisk day to give, asterisk beer to bear, asterisk da to put, asterisk deu to run, asterisk h ed to eat, asterisk h ek sharp, asterisk ped to tread, asterisk sed to sit, asterisk west to clothe. Roots can also have a more complex onset and coda, consisting of a consonant cluster, multiple consonants. These include asterisk d west to breathe, asterisk h rude red, asterisk h e r h to plow, asterisk h reg straight, asterisk leg to bind, asterisk prus to freeze, asterisk sru to flow, and asterisk s w e p to sleep, asterisk w l e y k to moisten. The maximum number of consonants seems to be five, as in asterisk strength to twine. Early Pi scholars reconstructed a number of roots beginning or ending with a vowel. The latter type always had a long vowel asterisk d to put, asterisk b wa to grow, asterisk do to give, while this restriction did not hold for vowel initial roots asterisk ed to eat, asterisk ag to drive, asterisk odd to smell. Laryngeal theory can explain this behavior by reconstructing a laryngeal following the vowel asterisk da, asterisk bweh, asterisk de, resulting in a long vowel or preceding it asterisk h ed, asterisk h egg, asterisk h ed, resulting in a short vowel. These reconstructions obey the mentioned rules. Topic. Sonority hierarchy When the onset or coda of a root contains a consonant cluster, the consonants in this cluster must be ordered according to their sonority. The vowel constitutes a sonority peak, and the sonority must progressively rise in the onset and progressively fall in the coda. Pi roots distinguish three main classes of consonants, arranged from high to low sonority. Non-labial sonorants asterisk L, asterisk R, asterisk Y, asterisk N, denoted collectively as R, Labial sonorants asterisk W, asterisk M, denoted collectively as M Obstruents, denoted collectively as asterisk C. These include three subgroups Plosives voiceless asterisk P asterisk T asterisk K asterisk K asterisk K, voiced asterisk B asterisk D asterisk G asterisk G asterisk G and aspirated asterisk B asterisk D asterisk asterisk G asterisk G, denoted collectively as asterisk P. The sibilant asterisk s. The laryngeals asterisk h asterisk h asterisk h, denoted collectively as h. The following rules apply. A consonant closer to the main vowel must have a higher sonority than the consonant further away. Thus, consonants in the onset must follow the order cmr, and the reverse rmc in the coda, giving cmr -E rmc as the full root shape. Roots with a different order of sonority, like asterisk asterisk mter or asterisk asterisk resl, are not allowed. Only one member of each sonority class may appear in the onset or coda. Thus, roots like asterisk asterisk wmek, asterisk asterisk lect or asterisk asterisk pale are not allowed. Strangely, laryngeals can also occur in the coda before a sonorant, as in asterisk pehw small. Topic. Obstruent clusters The obstruent slot of an onset or coda may consist of multiple obstruents itself. Here, too, only one member of each subgroup of obstruents may appear in the cluster. A cluster may not contain multiple laryngeals, sibilants or plosives. The rules for the ordering within a cluster of obstruents are somewhat different, and do not fit into the general sonority hierarchy. Asterisk s may appear only before a plosive, not after it. Thus, asterisk spec to observe, asterisk stay to stand, and asterisk strut to spread are valid roots. Asterisk asterisk tser and asterisk asterisk keps are not. Plosives are automatically devoiced when preceded by asterisk s in the onset. A laryngeal may appear before or after any obstruent other than another laryngeal. 
Examples are asterisk kehp to grab, asterisk peth to fly, in several routes, an unusual phenomenon called s mobile occurs, where some descendants include a prepended asterisk s while other forms lack it. There does not appear to be any particular pattern, sometimes forms with asterisk s and without it even occur side by side in the same language. Topic. Further restrictions Pi abided by the general cross-linguistic constraint against the co-occurrence of two similar consonants in a word root. In particular, no examples are known of roots containing two plain voiced plosives asterisk asterisk ged or two glides asterisk asterisk lur. A few examples of roots with two fricatives or two nasals asterisk ha, asterisk nem etc. can be reconstructed, but they were rare as well. An exception, however, were the voiced aspirated and voiceless plosives, which relatively commonly co-occurred e -E to burn, asterisk peth to fly. In particular, roots with two voiced aspirates were more than twice as common than could be expected to occur by chance. An additional constraint prohibited roots containing both a voiced aspirated and a voiceless plosive asterisk asterisk teb, unless the latter occurs in a word initial cluster after an asterisk s e asterisk steb to stiffen. Taken together with the abundance of asterisk d ed type roots, it has been proposed that this distribution results from a limited process of voice assimilation in pre pi, where a voiceless stop was assimilated to a voiced aspirate, if another one followed or proceeded within a root. Exceptions Some roots cannot be reconstructed with an oblouting asterisk e, an example being asterisk b a to grow, to become. Such roots can be seen as generalized zero grades of unattested forms like asterisk asterisk bweh, and thus follow the phonotactical rules. Some roots like asterisk p stir to sneeze or asterisk pteh k to duck do not appear to follow these rules. This might be due to incomplete understanding of pi phonotactics or to wrong reconstructions. Asterisk p stir, for example, might not have existed in pi at all, if the Indo-European words usually traced back to it are onomatopoeias. Thorn clusters are sequences of a dental asterisk t, asterisk d, asterisk d, plus a velar plosive asterisk k, asterisk g, asterisk g etc. Their role in pi phonotactics is unknown. Roots like asterisk d g a to perish apparently violate the phonotactical rules, but are quite common. Topic. Lexical meaning The meaning of a reconstructed root is conventionally that of a verb, the terms root and verbal root are almost synonymous in pi grammar. This is because, apart from a limited number of so-called root nouns, pi roots overwhelmingly participate in verbal inflection through well-established morphological and phonological mechanisms. Their meanings are not always directly reconstructable, due to semantic shifts that led to discrepancies in the meanings of reflexes in the attested daughter languages. Many nouns and adjectives are derived from verbal roots via suffixes and oblaut. Nevertheless, some roots did exist that did not have a primary verbal derivation. Apart from the aforementioned root nouns, the most important of these were the so-called caland roots, which had adjectival meaning. Such roots generally formed proterokinetic adjectives with the suffix asterisk u, thematic adjectives in asterisk rho and compounding stems in asterisk i. They included at least asterisk h root red, asterisk h erg white, asterisk dewb deep, and asterisk g ray heavy. Verbal roots were inherently imperfective durative, present, or perfective punctual, aoristic. To form a verb from the root's own aspect, verb endings were attached directly to the root, either with or without a thematic vowel. The other aspect, if it was needed, would then be a so called characterized stem, as detailed in Proto Indo European verb. The characterized stems are often different in different descendants, which suggests that they did not yet exist in Pi proper. Topic. Creation of new roots Roots were occasionally created anew within Pi or its early descendants. A variety of methods have been observed. Topic. Root extensions Root extensions are additions of one or two sounds, often plosives, to the end of a root. These extensions do not seem to change the meaning of a root, and often lead to variant root forms across different descendants. 
The source and function of these extensions is not known. For asterisk s to push, hit, thrust, we can reconstruct asterisk s tuk greater than ancient Greek tykos tukos hammer asterisk s tuk greater than Russian stu kappa stuck and stu kappa at stuck at knock and to knock asterisk s tu greater than English stoke Germanic k goes back to pi asterisk g asterisk s tu greater than Vedic tu dot t beats topic sonorant metathesis When the root contains a sonorant, the zero grade is ambiguous as to whether the sonorant should be placed before the oblaut vowel or after it. Speakers occasionally analyzed such roots the wrong way, and this has led to some roots being created from existing ones by swapping the position of the sonorant. An example of such a pair of roots, both meaning to increase, to enlarge, asterisk h weg greater than Gothic wasjon, ancient Greek aixo. Asterisk H E W G greater than Gothic Alcon, Latin Agio, Lithuanian Ogti. Another example concerns the root sky. Asterisk Diu greater than ancient Greek Zeus, Latin Dies, Sanskrit Diu. Asterisk D E Y W greater than Latin Divus, Old Prussian Divus, Sanskrit Diva. Topic see also Lexicon der Indogermanischen Verben Lexicon of the Indo-European Verbs, in German, a lexicon of Pi verbal roots Topic Notes Topic References Brugman, Karl, Delbruck, Berthold Grundry der Vergleichenden Grammatik der Indogermanischen Sprechen. Buck, Karl Darling June 1988. A Dictionary of Selected Synonyms in the Principal Indo-European Languages, A Contribution to the History of Ideas reprint edition. University of Chicago Press. ISBN 0-226-07937-6. Fortson, Benjamin W., IV. Indo-European Language and Culture. Blackwell Publishing. ISBN 1-4051-0316-7. Jasanoff, J. Hittite and the Indo-European Verb. Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19928198-X. Kobler, Gerhard Indogermanisches Wörterbuch Indo-European Dictionary in German. Mallory, J. P., Adams, D. Q. Encyclopedia of Indo-European Culture. Routledge. ISBN 1-884964-98-2. Meyer Brugger, Michael, Fritz, Matthias, Meyerhofer, Manfred Indo-European Linguistics. Berlin, New York, Walter de Gruyter. ISBN 3-11-017433-2. Pokorny, Julius Indogermanisches Etymologisches Wörterbuch. French and European Publications. ISBN 0-8288-6602-3. Ring, Don A Linguistic History of English Part 1, From Proto-Indo-European to Proto-Germanic. Ricks, Helmut 2001. Lexicon der Indogermanischen Verben. Dr. Ludwig Reichert Verlag. ISBN 3-89500-219-4. Watkins, Calvert, 14 September 2000. The American Heritage Dictionary of Indo-European Roots, 2nd edition. Houghton Mifflin. ISBN 0-395-98610-9. External links American Heritage Indo-European Roots Index Database query to the online version of Pokorny's Pi Dictionary Index to the online version of Pokorny's Pi Dictionary Jonathan Slocum, Indo-European Lexicon from the University of Texas Linguistic Research Center